What's up guys, Shane with Video 3D Printing and today we're going to install the Micro Swiss Almeto Hot End here on the CR-10S. Welcome back guys. So Micro Swiss sent me this nozzle quite a while back and I have not had time to get to installing it. But now I have done a lot of modifications to the CR-10S and now it's gonna be the time to do this. So my CR-10, I'm running a Micro Swiss MK-10 all metal nozzle so I can print all the abrasive things on that. But on this system, I wanted to be able to print all high temp things. So first thing we need to do is replace the stock hot end which uses a lot of PTFE and we're gonna put an all metal solution in there and that's where Micro Swiss comes in. Now the nice thing about this kit is it is an exact replacement for the stock one that comes on. It uses all the same mounting hardware, all the same mounting points. So it's quick and easy. It looks almost identical except it's a nice, nice shiny silver look. And this one goes up to 300 degrees centigrade. So all that high temp stuff you need to print, this is what you need to do it with. Okay, well let's get started. Let's take a look at all the parts that come in the box and then we'll get started working on the printer. So once we get in here, we have the actual, I guess we'll call this the cold end. So this is like the heat sink for your hot end here. It's got the PTFE tubing lock, uh, PTFE tube on there. There's the throat up in there. Here we have the heater block for this. And then we have the nozzle. And this should be a 0.4, yeah, 0 0.4 millimeter nozzle, all metal. And then here we have another part to the throat. And then here we have some screws now I believe online, yep, their instructions are, if we go to this link right here, I'll be able to find some instructions and I'll put a link down below to that so you guys can check that out as well. All right, now the first thing we need to do is heat up the hot end and take off the stock nozzle. So we're gonna heat this up to 230 degrees centigrade. I'm gonna go ahead and use my crescent wrench right here and pull that off real quick and easy and then we can move on. All right, now that we have that off, we're gonna go ahead and remove the assembly, the hot end, the PTFE, get all that off and all we're gonna have left is the thermistor, the fan and the actual heater block. I got this fan assembly. There are just two screws right here on this one on the side and then one on the top. Okay, once those are off, you're gonna have the actual housing held in by the two fans. We're gonna go ahead and pull both of those fans out because I will either be reusing them or replacing them with the new shroud that I'm gonna be using. Well, actually, there's gonna be no shroud because I'm going to a dual fan setup and eventually an easy ABL sensor. So we're gonna just go ahead and do that whole swap now because that's just gonna make things easier. If you're not doing that, you can just take this off and kind of loop it over the back of this extrusion just to kind of keep it there out of the way and not have to worry about it. All right, so now we're off to there. Now we're gonna go ahead and take out the hot end, which are just these two screws right here on the cold end or the probably heat sink part of the hot end. All right, now that's off. We can go ahead and underneath here, there are two very, there's a very small grub screw, which will help release the heater block. Let's see if we can get to it. Okay, there's that grub screw. And the heater block slides out. I have to release the thermistor as well because they are tied there together, which is just a Phillips. Kind of unloop that now. Take this all the way out. And I broke the thermistor, so I'm gonna have to replace that. That's okay. All right, now to get out the PTFE tubing, sometimes you can't just push down on this. So I'm gonna take a pair of needle nose pliers. I'm gonna push down on the PTFE fitting while holding the hot end with my other hand, and then pull up on the actual tubing, and it should be able to come out, hopefully without pinching my hand. All right, so I'm not able to get the PTFE tubing out of this. For me, it doesn't matter because I'm gonna switch to Capricorn, but you probably need to heat this back up again in order to get it loose because I do see a little bit of uh, plastic down in there, which is not making it very easy to pull this out. So that being said, we're gonna go ahead and you could reuse the heater block, but since mine is all gunked up, I'm not going to. I'm gonna use the one that came with the kit. So I'm gonna use that and what I need to do so I do have this heater block coupler that we're going to use. I'm just going to screw that right here into the heater block. And that is the first step to this. And now we're gonna go ahead and get the new all metal nozzle 
and we're going to screw that into the bottom of the heater block as far as that is going to go. If you need a little persuasion, you can go ahead and use your crescent wrench to get it on there tightly. All right, now that we have this assembled, we're going to go ahead and get the cold end and we're going to attach it back here to the frame so we can attach this. This makes it nice and easy because this literally is a push fitting up onto it with a grub screw that's going to hold it on. There's the heater block in there, and now we have to do is get the grub screw wherever I put it. Here it is, and this will hold that in. Okay, since I screwed up my thermistor, I'm gonna go ahead and fix that real quick, and then we'll come back and we'll finish this up. All right, well, that's fixed now, and I tested it, and I am seeing proper temperature, so that's good. So we have the thermistor and heater block ready to go. Now we're gonna go ahead and worry about our fans. I'm gonna leave this fan on here for now, the stock fan. I'll probably eventually switch it out with, to a Noctua or something like that. But the part cooling fan, for me, I'm changing up because I'm going to this new setup here, which uses the dual 5015 blower fans. So I'm gonna go ahead and install a pigtail on here and actually go ahead and install this because this actually has to go behind this mount. So I'm gonna put this on there, remount that, and then I'll have the big tails on here and then you'll see how I'm gonna wire all that up. But if you're not doing that, again, you can now put on your stock assembly again and you're pretty much off to the races. But for me, a little bit more work, let's get it done. The only thing I kind of forgot was this mount right here and you need this to mount the 40 millimeter fan on here when using this type of bracket. So you can see I have all everything all hooked up. I guess I'm gonna keep this fan on here for now just to see how it works out, but I do have the two 5015 fans set up on there. And yeah, those are all good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach this to the hot end and then that all gets screwed down together and then I can attach this fan to it. And I think we're pretty much done. I'll verify everything after that. So a little bit lighter now, I fixed some of my camera settings, but so I have the fans mounted, a little tension bar right between here to keep these from wiggling. I still need to mount the fans. I just have to add the bolts up here, but this hot end is a hot end cooling fan or cold end cooling fan is set. These are the, these are the print cooling fans right down here onto the nozzle. This silicon heater block cover is from Tiny Machines. And yeah, so all they have to do now is add in some Capricorn tubing. Now all I'm going to do with this is I'm going to make it the exact same length that the stock one is, as guess, guesstimate as close as I can. This is the high temperature stuff. So this is supposed to go up to, I believe, 260 or 300 degrees, something like that. Something pretty high. So I just need to find the stock one and just measure it out here. Okay. Now when you cut this, I am using a razor blade and I'm putting down on the table and I'm pushing this flat down onto it just to get that. And that way I'm sure I get a nice and clean cut. So now to do this, we just need to insert it into the hot end as far as it will go, which isn't very far because it's an all metal hot end. And then I'm going to feed it back through the tape on here if I can, otherwise I'll zip tie it. And this is just me being kind of cheap. I don't have any of this tape uh, kind of left over for anything. So let me just, Get up here, pull this through, until it's tight there, yep. And I have to cut some more off of this just because it's gonna be too long. Yep, and that's just a smidgen too long. So we'll just cut this down real quick. And there we have it. So I just need to put a you know, zip tie or something on here just to kind of keep this all together. I thought I kept a piece of the tape. Oh, I did piece of piece of tape, so if it'll hold it at all. But uh, yeah, so there's a hot end, fully assembled now. And now we can print super high temp stuff. Not too bad. So that's pretty much it guys. But as you can see, my workspace is now an absolute mess. It's a little bit time consuming to get this done. Again, I went with a little bit different setup with the dual 5015 fans. And then I'm gonna have the easy ABL sensor on here as well. But and then if you can kind of listen here, this 40 millimeter man is a little bit loud, so I'm probably going to go ahead and switch that out with something a little quieter. Again, I have a noise blocker and I have a knock to a 20 millimeter fan or a 20 millimeter thick fan. Those move quite a bit of air, so those will be enough to be able to cool on that, but you can feel it pretty much all over. And the PSU fan on this is still a bit loud, but we'll address that in another video. 
And again, I just want to say that all the mods I've done to this printer so far, it's very different. There's no control box and like that. I will do a separate video just on that and how you guys can do that. But this video is just for the all metal hot end, replacing the cooling setup and adding in the Capricorn tubing. So thanks for watching guys. Sorry this video was a little bit odd, but uh, my close-up camera had died on me, so I wasn't able to get some close-ups of the actual Micro Swiss hot end during the assembly. But I will link Micro Swiss's actual installation guide that goes step-by-step -step through their installation, gives you nice close-ups, what you need to look for. So I'll link their video down below so that if you want to check that out for step by step and kind of look see what i did here you can go ahead and do that and lastly i just want to say a big shout out to micro swiss thank you guys for providing this hot end for me to test out here on my channel this is just the installation but i will be doing some high temp printing i have some derlin film that needs to be printed i have some other high temperature stuff that i would love to start printing on something other than the ft5 so i thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to use this Thanks for watching, guys. If you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. Either way, give me some comments down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. If you guys want to stay up to date on what I'm doing here on my channel, make sure to become a subscriber. And if you want to get any notifications, hit that bell icon, and that way you'll be one of the first ones to know when new content hits the floor. If you guys want to support me on a monthly basis, there's a Patreon link down below. Donate me a dollar or more. I appreciate it. Current Patreons, you guys are always awesome. If you want to donate to me without committing monthly, there's going to be a Streamlabs tip and a buy me a coffee down below. The coffee is for help me getting new lighting set up for when I move. And if you just want to help me out by just doing some affiliate link usage down below, there's going to be affiliate links for the different parts here. Where to buy the Micro Swiss gear, which is not affiliate link because I don't have affiliates with them. But if Amazon, eBay, things like that, if you want to do any of your shopping via those shops, use my bookmarks down below. A little slice of what you buy comes here to help me out here at the channel. I thank you guys for watching, and until next time, happy printing.